Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, my name is Maida Barbelli. I'm one of the student recruitment advisors for the University of Calgary. I speci speci specialize on the United States, Latin America, and the Caribbean, but I will introduce you to the rest of the team um, so you know who you would have to contact uh, depending on where you are in the world. Um, you can see in the screen two QR co codes. Um, the first one will be for the Canadian Students uh, Viewbook for the University of Calgary. It will have all the information about uh, what we offer, reasons to choose you Calgary, admission requirements, tuition, all that information will be there. So feel free to uh, scan that QR code to get access to the national or the Canadian student um, viewbook. If you're an international student, which I doubt, uh, you can absolutely uh, also check out the international student viewbook. Um, it is there as well for you to check it out too. Um, so here's the uh, recruitment team, the international team. So we got Allison, who is in charge of Africa and Europe, um, Michaela, who is in charge of anybody in Asia or Oceania. Um, you got myself, um, and then we have our colleague Ashley, uh, who takes care of India, East Asia, the Middle East, including Egypt, and then uh, Natalia, who is our recruitment assistant and kind of like digital recruiter as well. So Canada, yeah, we've been ranked number one in the world. Uh, it is a very safe, stable, and friendly country. Uh, lots of different advantages. The degree that you gain in Canada will take you anywhere in the world. Um, I used to be an international student myself. It is a fantastic country to be at, and I've been here for the last 11 years. Um, here is kind of like a perspective of where we are in Canada. So under two hours from Vancouver, around four hours from Toronto. Um, and then you can see the different uh, travel times, more or less, uh, from different places around the world. Uh, but our next slide will show you exactly uh, from different major cities in the US, uh, how long roughly it will take you to get to Calgary as well. The University of Calgary, it's located about 20 minutes from the Calgary International Airport. Um, obviously, due to the pandemic, uh, lots of flights uh, are not currently functioning, but um, it is pretty easy to get anywhere from the city of Calgary um, to any cities across the US and even to different continents as well. In terms of the province of Alberta, so one of the advantages of staying within the province of Alberta is that it is the only province in Canada that doesn't have a provincial sales tax. So when you look at uh, the purchasing power side of things, uh, when you buy a t-shirt in Alberta, you'll be paying 7% less taxes than in British Columbia or 8% less taxes than in Ontario. Um, and in addition to that, Alberta also has the highest hourly wage in all of Canada at $15 an hour. In terms of the city of Calgary, so it's been ranked number one most livable city in North America, number fifth in the world. Um, Calgary is the innovation, energy, engineering capital of Canada. Uh, entrepreneurship is huge um, in the city of Calgary and the University of Calgary alone has contributed since 2017 to uh, 360 new inventions and innovations um, alone. So that's quite fantastic as well. Uh, we are an hour away from the Rocky Mountains. So if you like the outdoors, skiing, snowboarding, uh, you drive an hour, you're already there, uh, camping in the summer, hiking, it's also very popular, uh, but lots of different outdoor activities for you to enjoy. Um, in terms of the, the weather, so we are Canada's sunniest major city with 333 sunny days per year. Um, and that's one of my favorite things about the city of Calgary itself. So the sun and the blue skies, majority of the time will be there. Um, so it's not a gray winter kind of thing, uh, which, which I really appreciate from the city itself. Now here's an aerial view of main campus of the University of Calgary. So few buildings to highlight are Taylor Family Digital Library. It's the most technologically library in North America with 7.8 million records. Um, you can see residents in the top uh, corner there. Um, it is on campus and I'll touch on that in just a second. Uh, we also have the Olympic Oval. So in 1988, Calgary hosted the Winter Olympics. 
Um, this place is recognized as the fastest ice in the world, and the reason being that the highest records of ice skating have been broken in this building. As a student, you absolutely have access to the Olympic Oval itself, as well as to any of our facilities and amenities that we offer. Um, all of our buildings here are uh, connected through underground tunnels or plus 15 bridges. We call them plus 15 because they're 15 feet off the ground. Um, so you don't necessarily have to go to the outside when, when it gets cold, because it does get cold for about two to three weeks. Uh, from residence all the way to the transit station, it should take you about 10 to 15 minutes if you walk outside. If you go the indoor route, it will be a little bit longer, so maybe 20 to 25. Uh, but the transit station is right there. We also have a bus loop. You get connected to anywhere within the city, um, either by bus or train. From downtown Calgary, it will be around a 15 minute uh, train ride or 30 minute bus ride. Um, and from downtown Calgary, there's also a bus that goes directly to the airport as well. Um, it will probably take you about 25 minutes. So overall, if you take public transportation, it's under an hour, but over 40 minutes for sure to get to the airport. If you drive, about 20 minutes, 25, depending if it's rush hour. Um, so we have around 27,000 undergrad students at the University of Calgary. Um, out of that, we have 150 countries represented throughout. Um, the university itself in the, is in the top 200 universities in the world, uh, number six in research, research within Canada as well. So just some statistics about the University of Calgary overall. I mentioned this is main campus. There's five different campuses throughout um, the city. Um, at the very top, you see a few buildings that will be Foothills campus for anybody in the medical field. Uh, but usually our undergrad students will be at main campus for 99 to 100% of the time. So this will be home for you uh, for when, once you're completing your undergrad degree. So going back to residence, so we do guarantee residence for your first two years of residence as long as you submit an application for residence specifically before May 1st each year. Um, in your first year, it's a very traditional double room um, no access to a kitchen or a fridge inside of your room. You do share bathrooms. Uh, because we, you don't have access to a kitchen in a room, um, you do have to buy the all you care to eat meal plan or actually include in your residencies. Um, so you can go to a dining center as well as different restaurants throughout um, the university um, and to, to buy your meals. Um, that's perfectly fine. The food in, in the dining center is amazing. Um, faculty, staff, we usually go there to eat. Um, so that, that really puts you in perspective that the food is really good. Um, if you have any dietary restrictions, they can absolutely take care of that um, at residence at the dining center. Um, and yeah, that's that's kind of like all the information regarding residents that, that I can share at this point. Um, they do have a great matching system to make sure that they match you with somebody who has a similar lifestyle as you do. Uh, so if you like to study at night, uh, then they will match you with somebody that also studies at night so you're not bothering each other, things like that. So on that uh, process or, or quiz that residents uh, does to all of our students, you have to be absolutely honest to make sure that uh, we match you with somebody that you'll get along with. In terms of sports, so we're home of the Dinos. There's 11 different sports that we have, uh, varsity sports at the University of Calgary. Um, I'm not an expert on how to become a Dino specifically, but I, I can absolutely reach out to coaches and put you in, in touch with coaches so you can ask all the necessary questions to become a Dino and be part of one of these teams. If you're not a sports person like me, that's perfectly fine. Um, their games are actually quite fantastic to go watch and the dinos to increase participation uh, in the crowd, actually they do raffles of $1,000 just by, by attending the game, which is pretty neat. So lots of different opportunities to hang out with friends as well and cheer on your dinos for sure. If you're not super athletic or super competitive, but you like to still play a sport, we still have 50 intramural sports teams that you can join. It's less competitive to get in, um, but uh, it's a great opportunity nonetheless. I mentioned that uh, included in your tuition and fees, um, 
you will have access to all the different amenities that we offer. So we have an Olympic sized swimming pool. Uh, we have a two floor fitness center. So all that is included in your tuition and fees. Um, if you are really an outdoors person, we also have the largest outdoor center in North America. So that's where you can rent all your equipment to go skiing, snowboarding, camping, hiking, you name it. At the University of Calgary, there is around 300 student clubs um, run by students. So uh, they will vary from academics to um, various interests, to specific culture, to specific language. So lots of opportunities for you to uh, connect with other students at the university that are sharing similar interests as you, as you do. So you can see there some of the last year's winners, uh, the Africa Caribbean Student Association, the UFC Creative Writing Circle, uh, the Human Sophia Calgary and the U UC Dance Company. Um, so usually they put on great events throughout the academic year and they're open to everybody um, to participate. It's just a way for students to stay connected and get to know um, other people throughout campus. So in terms of student support, uh, Lots of support, it's available to you as a student at the University of Calgary. So when you're looking for a job, um, Career Services is there to support you. So they will do um, different prep inter for your interviews. They will help you with your uh, resume, with your application itself. Um, you just have to make sure to reach out to them to find that um, opportunity. Uh, but you can absolutely access that, again, for free. Um, at the University of Calgary. We want to make sure that you succeed academically. So the Student Success Center uh, will be there providing that support. So they have writing support, they have math support. Uh, they also do different workshops throughout the year, um, such as time management, for example. Um, so there, this is all available for you as a student. Uh, we also have a doctor on campus. So through the Student Wellness Center, um, doctors, uh, that could be your family doctor when you're in town. Um, they also have like different wellness um, services as well within the, the doctor's office. So counseling, massages, all that is available at the university. To be honest, the only thing that we don't really have will be a supermarket inside of the university. But other than that, I think we cover all, all of your bases. Uh, there are supermarkets close by uh, when you live in residence and you do have access to a kitchen, that's absolutely possible and, and not too far away. Um, and last but not least, I want to mention the Leadership and Student Engagement Office. So they do lots of different volunteer opportunities. Um, lots of leadership opportunities for you. They plan lots of exciting events throughout campus. Um, and again, it's just a great way to get to know other students, uh, share similar interests. I actually participated in a volunteer opportunity when I was a student in Costa Rica where uh, we went to a rural community and we kind of like helped the community um, in, in, in an island called Chira Island. So that was quite fantastic, quite fun. Um, we really had a great time and, and, and you feel so good by helping the community as well. Um, so moving on to the academic side of things. So the University of Calgary focuses on three main pillars, experiential learning, research focus and entrepreneurship. So I mentioned already entrepreneurship being part of the city of Calgary. Um, we receive under $500 million for sponsored research funding as the undergrad level specifically. So any field that you're interested in, any program that you would like to study at the university, there will be a research opportunity for you. Um, you have to find it, but there will be one, I can guarantee you. So we're a multidisciplinary research institution. So that, that's really the focus of the university. Um, in terms of experiential learning, so we make sure that all of our students are applying what they're learning throughout their degree uh, before you're actually done. And one of the ways and opportunities we provide is through co-op and internships. So depending on the faculty you're in, you will have the opportunity to do one or the other. They are exactly the same thing, just different names. Uh, the main difference between the two is that co-ops, usually you can split them down into four months and you can technically work up to three to four different companies. Um, it has more like a back and forth between classes and work. 
Uh, whereas internships, usually after your third year, you would go work for a company for 12 to 16 months, and then you would come back to the university to finish your degree, and then you're done. Um, so co-ops are offered usually for those interested in a program within the Faculty of Arts um, or the Haskin School of Business. Internships are offered to the students interested in uh, Faculty of Science, and Schulich School of Engineering, and then we also have practicums for um, students in the nursing program and the kinesiol uh, sorry, and the um, education program as well. Now, here's the eight different faculties you can apply to within the undergrad level at the University of Calgary. Uh, so we don't have absolutely everything, but we I think we cover most um, programs uh, that exist. Um, so on my next two slides, you will be able to see exactly what programs we offer underneath each faculty. Um, so you can see here business, we offer a Bachelor of Commerce. There's 16 different concentrations you can choose from. Um, then we got Faculty of Science. Some of them are honors, uh, such as neuroscience. So you do have to complete a research thesis before you're done your degree. Uh, lots of different programs under the Faculty of Arts, but then you can also see fine arts. So we do have film studies, we have dance, we have drama, uh, visual studies kind of like encompasses graphic design, uh, sculpting, um, painting, all that. It's kind of like within visual studies. We do have music. And then some of the programs that we offer under Bachelor of Arts will also have um, a science component. So you can see there you could do anthropology either as a faculty of arts or science. Um, archaeology will be the same, same as psychology. So just some different options here and there um, that we offer. Now the next slide will show you the other remaining faculties that couldn't fit in the previous screen. So you got medicine, so we have the community rehabilitation program as well as health sciences. Uh, you see education, then engineering. There's one field in engineering that has been added this year. It's biomedical engineering. Now you, we, we offer it as a program. Um, so that's another possibility for you. Then we got kinesiology has been ranked number one faculty in North America, number seven in the world. And then we show you different post-secondary study programs um, that you can do after you complete your undergrad degree. So architecture, medicine, law, veterinary medicine, all those programs will be after you complete your four-year undergrad program. Now moving on to admissions. So it is competitive and it's based on five specific high school subjects. These five subjects will vary depending on what program you're interested in. And I have an example in my next slide that I can go over. <clears throat> now, applications usually open in October each year, and they will remain open until March 1st the following year. So usually you would apply, I would recommend you apply as early as you can. The application itself, it's pretty straightforward. You apply directly into the University of Calgary website. Um, we ask for your personal information, where you have attended school, and so if it's been different schools throughout the last three years, you will have the opportunity to state all three different schools, that's perfectly fine. Um, and then we're going to ask your top two choices at the university. After that, you will pay your the application fee, which currently is 145 Canadian dollars, and then you've successfully applied to the university. After, we are going to require you to upload some documents. So the documents that we usually require are your high school transcripts. Um, so for all the schools that you have attended, usually we want to see grade 10, 11, and 12. Um, if you're studying inside of the United States, currently we are still requiring the SAT and ACT. It may change for next year, uh, but we're still waiting for an approval, but that's usually uh, the requirement. So we need to see SATs or ACTs. Uh, when I say that it may change, it may change due to the current uh, pandemic in the world and the SAT cancellations and all that. Uh, but the norm, I think if everything goes back to normal, the norm will be that we require students completing a high school in the US to present the SAT or ACT. If you are completing the American curriculum abroad, um, you don't have to worry about the SAT or ACT. 
uh, they are completely optional. We don't require them at all. Um, other than those two documents, um, another document that may pop up under your to-do list will be English language proficiency. Um, if you've studied at an accredited school offshore, either Canadian, American, or British, that should be waived. Uh, sometimes the system is not super smart, so it still shows shows up on your to-do, but that's when you can work with one of the recruiters, including myself, to make sure that we clean up your to-do um, and make sure that, in fact, you don't need the English language proficiency. Um, so here's the example of the five different courses, depending on different programs. Um, so again, in the view book, you will be able to see exactly this uh, for all the different programs that we offer at the institution. So you can see that for anything within arts, we will see, calculate your average GPA based on English plus four other courses. Um, engineering, for example, it's very structured, so we need to see that you've taken English, math, calculus, chemistry, and then physics or biology, and we'll calculate your GPA based on that. Um, for science, so anything within the Faculty of Science, English, math, two science courses, and one additional course. Um, that's kind of like another example that, that it's not in the screen. Because I'm not, here's more information about English language requirements uh, in case that it's needed. Um, so you can see that if you've completed three years in an accredited school, that should be waived. But here are all the different exams that we do accept and the minimum scores that you would need to have in order to fulfill that requirement if that is needed or if applicable. Um, because I'm not too sure which curriculum you're completing, I'm just going to briefly touch on the different ones that we accept at the institution. Um, and again, it's just general information that then you can connect with us and we can expand on the specific scenario for you. So if you're doing the IB um, diploma or certificates, um, if they're higher level courses, you can get credit. Um, for the diploma, any higher level courses that you take can be awarded credit towards the University of Calgary degree that you'll be completed. We do have specific awards for IB. So if you have a 35 or higher, uh, we have an IB entrance award of $2,000. Um, if you have a 40 or higher, you can potentially get the President's Award, which is $5,000. Um, we do accept IB. We can base your admissions based on IB. What we will require in terms of transcripts will be your predicted scores for your year two of the IB diploma if you haven't completed it yet. And then we'll base your admissions offer on your predicted grades. If you're doing the British curriculum or you're maybe in the Caribbean, which follows the GCE system, we're basically gonna look at uh, four AES level courses plus one O level course, or we could also base your admissions on two A level courses and then three O level courses. Um, if you're not taking this and this is confusing, that's perfectly fine. It took me a while to learn this, uh, but that's just the setup or uh, the organization that the different courses, how we use them in order to admit you to the university. Now, let's say you're interested in engineering. It doesn't matter uh, if English is an O level or an AS or A level, as long as you meet with the, the rule of four AS and one O level or two A levels and three O levels, that's perfectly fine. Uh, we don't really care at what level each course is being taken as long as you have taken those five specific Moving on to the American curriculum, so we will consider any junior classes, any senior classes, or courses that you take as part of the admissions requirements, um, and then honors AP, we can absolutely take them as well, into consideration for your um, GPA calculation and admissions average calculation. And then AP, so if you are taking AP, uh, we will give you credit as long as you have a grade of four or higher. And we do have a list in our website with all the different AP courses that we accept, what that will look like in terms of a University of Calgary course. Um, I'll be happy if you send me an email, I'll be happy to share that with you as well if needed. Moving on to tuition, so 
this is how much you will be looking at paying for your first year at the University of Calgary. When I do say first year, I mean September to April, eight months. Um, so if you are a Canadian citizen, you will be paying Canadian citizens and permanent residents fees. So it will be the first um, amount of money that you see on the screen, the 17,000 up to $23,000. Um, that money or that range covers all of your tuition. So 10 courses, uh, which is usually what you will take in a year, plus general fees. So that will be your transit pass. You can move around the city, a complimentary health and dental plan, which if you're already covered, you can absolutely opt out of it and save a little bit of money there. Um, and going on with the uh, health and, and dental plan, so in Alberta, it is free to sign up for the Alberta Provincial Healthcare. As soon as you arrive to Calgary, you'll go to a registry, you sign up for it. Um, you show proof that you're a student at the university um, and that shouldn't be an issue for you to sign up. And then um, for the health and dental plan, so this is offered through the students' union um, website. And then you just have to talk to the students' union, show proof that you've been cover through your parents' health insurance, and then they should be waived that fee from you and you don't have to pay it. Uh, we're including in here a range of textbooks. Um, so not every course will require you to have a textbook. You can also rent textbooks or buy used textbooks. Um, so that's why the range is kind of big. Uh, we're including living expenses and spending money. So that will mean like paying for your cell phone bill or going out with friends or getting a haircut, things like that. And then we're including your first year on campus residence as well as all of your meals. So this will give you the whole picture of everything and anything you will potentially be paying for. Uh, we're not including airplane tickets here, uh, but other than that, I believe everything is covered. Um, so in terms of undergrad awards and scholarships, so each year we give away more than $17 million in scholarships, bursaries, and awards. Um, and for fall 2020, over 40% of the class receive at least one undergrad award, which has gone up, which is really nice. Um, so the best way for me to explain the different awards will be, think about it as three buckets of money. So the first bucket of money being automatic admission awards, meaning that you apply for admissions and you will be automatically considered for this one. So there's nothing you have to do. So I mentioned the IB $2,000 ones already, but um, the $5,000 is not only for IB students, but also anybody who has a 4.0 GPA or a 95 out of 100 will get the $5,000 uh, President's Award. Um, the second bucket of money, it's prestige awards. So the applications for awards will open at the exact same time that admissions open. So October 1st, usually, October 1st to 3rd, usually is when we open applications. Um, for prestige awards, so these are the higher value scholarships that you can apply to um, at the University of Calgary. And the key information is that the deadline to apply for these awards will be December 1st each year. So you basically will submit one application and you're applying to every single prestige award that we offer at the institution. Um, once you apply for it, then our awards team will be in charge of figuring out what you're eligible for and then considering you for that specific um, award or scholarship. And then we also have high school awards. So you do have a little bit more time to apply for this one. You have until March 1st to complete the application. There's a couple of examples on the screen, uh, but there's hundreds that you will be applying to. Their range will vary from 5,000 up to $10,000. Um, and again, you're submitting one application for absolutely all of the different high school awards that we offer. We also have a website um, in our awards website where we post different external awards. So it's a matter of checking um, in there to see if you're eligible for them, to see what deadlines they have. We usually will refer you directly into the organization that it's providing the award, um, just because we don't handle that money, but they are the ones that do, and they are the ones that actually process the applications. So um, we do offer this resource in our website for you to check out and to dig in further to see if, if you're eligible for anything else. 
here's kind of like a wrap up of all the different dates that uh, I kind of mentioned throughout the presentation. Uh, so again, if you're not applying this year, they will usually stay the same every year. The only variation I would argue would be October 1st, sometimes it's October 3rd, and then the start of classes usually varies as well. But other than that, it is exactly the same all year round. Um, we always close applications March 1st. Again, we have rolling admissions, so the sooner you apply, the more chances you're gonna have. Uh, procedure wars deadline has always been December 1st, even since I became a student back in 2011. So it's it's a pretty good um, timeline to look at and save uh, for, for the future if, if you're not applying for next year. We do have lots of campus tours, virtual campus tours, um, lots of webinars happening all year round, especially this year. So this is the website where you'll go to find out more about our campus tours as well as um, any upcoming webinars. Uh, one that I really want to, to bring your attention to uh, this Wednesday, actually, October 21st, we will have an undergrad award webinar um, for, for all of our uh, students in high school currently. Um, and they will share tips and tricks about, about the, the scholarships applications you have to be completing. So that's a good one to check out. Uh, we usually have that once a year, so it will happen every year. Uh, again, they're usually in person, but I think COVID has taught us something pretty great about being all online. So I do hope that next year we'll have a webinar as well, regarding, uh, regardless of what's going on in the world. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, if I miss anything, but uh, I want to leave my email and contact information here. So all the international recruiters do have a WhatsApp uh, phone number, so you can message us if you have any questions. Um, and the role for the email is pretty straightforward. So we always use .recruiter at ucalgary.ca. The very first bit is what changes depending on the region that you're in. Uh, I know I, I kind of like introduced the team earlier on and they had their email addresses. If you didn't get a chance to look at those, perfectly fine. Feel free to email me and I will redirect you to the appropriate recruiter and answer any questions. If you are within the US, I'll be happy to do that as well. I appreciate your time. I hope you found this session um, helpful and uh, happy to answer anything that I may have missed, Brenda. <laughs> That's great, Maida. Thank you so much. That was awesome. You actually covered most of the things I think that we usually ask, so that's awesome. I do have a few very quick questions that I um, made note of. Um, do you offer classes just in COVID times and all of that, um, virtual options for students to study from wherever they are? Is mm -hmm. that a possibility? So not in the past, we basically moved to an online setting this fall. Uh, we will be online about 70% in the winter term, but I don't know what the future will look like. I don't know if it will be blended. In the past, it was very limited online classes that we offered. So it was mostly in person. Okay. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nobody knows. Um, and along with that, can you just kind of talk quickly to what the um, quarantine procedures are right now mm -hmm. in Calgary? Yeah, so the Canadian government does require you to quarantine for 14 days after you arrive in Canada. Um, residents does have, and the university does have support for quarantining um, if you don't have family here where you can stay or, um, so that's absolutely a possibility and you will work directly with residents for the 14 days. Uh, lots of support being available from the University of Calgary itself to make sure our students are well uh, during that time. But um, yeah, it will be two weeks currently as of October 19, <laughs> uh, that you have to be self-quarantined for, for that period. Yeah, and hopefully that will change by the time that school starts next year, but uh, right. hard, to, hard to say what will happen. Along that kind of lines, um, 
so it's it's quite possible that you might have a student um, from OutCan apply to University of Calgary and, and come and having never been in Calgary itself. Do you have any kind of welcome uh, for kids that are coming in, you know, first time away from home um, in a strange city, that sort of thing? Like, do you meet people at the airport? Is there anything like that or in the transit station? Right. So we don't have, unfortunately, an airport pickup service. However, um, we do have a welcome center. So each year, um, from middle of August all the way to the start of classes and even beyond that, we do have a student staff who runs the welcome center and they're there to support any new students coming into Calgary, regardless where they're coming from and their citizenship. Uh, so it's open to Canadians as well as international students. And then following along that thought, uh, we do have an international student services team. Um, they will support anybody who's new to Canada. Um, even if you're a Canadian citizen, you can still access any of the services that they offer. Um, yeah. Excellent. No, that's good. Just curious because it is something that sometimes happens. Um, another quick question with regards to just kind of the marks that come in and the SATs and ACTs, we, we often, because the SATs and ACTs are belled um, or, you know, they're, they're taking these tests with kids who have been in the system all along, is there any consideration um, when you're looking at marks for applicants who, you know, let's say that they're they're doing really well in school, but they have a really awful SAT because they're they're not used to test taking in that manner? Do how do you, you look at the applications and the marks and those kind of things? Mm -hmm. So again, we only base it on on grades. So we'll look at whatever. The specific five courses, we'll look at those five grades. Uh, now, for students inside of the U.S., we require at an 1190 score for the SAT and a composite score of 24 for the ACT. We can do an initial evaluation based on a score of 1100 for the SAT and 22 for the ACT. But we do require anybody inside of the U.S. to have the minimum score. Um, and then that will be a combination that plus the, the average on the five specific courses. And if the average on the five specific courses does meet the, the overall average to, to get into that program um, and they have an 1190, they should be fine for admission. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question, um, one of the things you mentioned was that you look at junior marks and senior marks mainly, um, mm -hmm. or courses taken in the junior and senior year. Um, I know some of the schools down here, they offer, like, a, a, it's a chemistry 11, but it's taken in 10th grade. Um, would it be disqualified because of that, even though it's an, a, a, a junior level course taken earlier, or is that something that would be a problem? Um, so, well, in that case, we're going to ask for a course outline uh, to assess the course, um, and then it will be up to the faculty to determine if we can consider that as a junior level course, and then we can consider that for admissions. Okay, awesome. Um, very last question. Um, that's awesome, by the way, that you have a two-year university residence guarantee. Uh, there aren't very many colleges, I don't think, in Canada that offer that, so that's great. Um, beyond that, do you have a, a housing um, department that helps with regards to apartments and things like that for kids who might not want to stay in residence, um, whether it's like posted apartments or that sort of thing? Mm -hmm. So International Student Services has lots of resources in their website and they can also support students um, with looking off campus house, housing as well, as well as the Welcome Center. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I think that's it for my questions. Thank you very, very much. This was an awesome presentation. I really appreciate you uh, being here for our OutCan students. Thank you, you for having me. Last things before we go. 
I don't think so. I think we covered everything. I do appreciate everybody uh, listening to, to the recording later on and for the invitation as well. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.